Welcome to Kids Church Online. Uh, here are today's announcements. Join us on Sunday for Kids Church at 10. Kids Club and Preteen will be every Friday from 6 to 8. October 31st, Fall Fun Fest at 6.30 to 8.30. More information, please free, feel free to contact Caitlin and Crystal at family at rpcchurch.ca. God has given us, given us family to support us guide us in our choices and help us in times of trouble whoever wants to be the first among you must be the servant of everyone else mark 10 44 abram and his nephew lot both prospered while living in the land of canaan their servants began to argue over whose flocks and herds should have been or should have the little amount of grass that was available. To solve the problem, Abraham told Lot to choose an area for himself that he Abram would take what was left. Lot chose the more fertile land and moved near a place where the where very bad people live. Abram began living in a less fertile area, but God blessed him and told him that all of that line would someday belong to his descendants. Hey kids, look what Putty and Buddy found. They found some phones left along the street. Now Putty is saying that he should get the better phone because he found it first. And he gives the still working but older generation phone to Buddy. Buddy doesn't really have a say in this and he accepts. Now, have you guys ever felt like this has happened to you, where maybe even you did it yourself? Maybe you're sharing a cookie and you gave someone the one that was a bit more crumbled than the one that was looked that than the one that looked better in the box, or maybe you had a pencil and you gave them the one that was maybe a bit more broken and beat up rather than the one that you normally use. Well, let me tell you why that's not good, because even though you're sharing. It's still, what you're doing is still out of selfish desire. You still want, want what is better for yourself. Just like Putty here, he wanted to keep a nice new phone for himself and give the older one to Buddy. Let me tell you a story like this in the Bible. It's, a, it's about Abraham and his nephew Lot. Now, Abraham and Lot were deciding about where to live. And Abraham, even though he was Lot's uncle, he let Lot choose first. He, they came to an intersection and he told Lot that he, if Lot were to pick the left, Abraham would go to the right and vice versa. Now, on the left hand side, there was a very lush and beautiful green plain filled with very bustling cities of people. And on the right were some rocky mountains and hills that were suitable to live in but weren't ideal. Now, Lot chose to go towards the lush fields and decided to live over there. So Abraham followed his word and went over to the right. Now, after a while, Lot's, Lot's life on the very lush side of the field became not that great. Where he was, Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed because they were overly sinful, and his wife disobeyed God and got turned into a pillar of salt. How sad! Now Abraham, however, he was able to live a peaceful life which did not have many intrusions or interruptions. You see, Abraham had seniority and he could have told Lot that, oh, I'm your uncle, I get to pick, and he could have taken the better side. Yet, he didn't and did the selfless choice and let Lot pick first. Now, this shows us that God rewards us in the long run. And even though what we, what we may think is not a good decision for us right now, we know that God will return it back. And we know that he will return it back plentifully. So we just have to trust in his timing. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Abraham. This is Abraham. Hey. When Abraham was younger, he was known as Abram. Oh. Abram lived in a place called Haran. 
One day, God told Abram, Leave your home with your family and go to a place that I will show you. Ah. So Abram traveled with his wife Sarai, their nephew Lot, and the rest of their family. The new land that they made home was crowded. Abram said to Lot, Let's not fight. Is the whole land not before us? Huh. Let's split up. You go one way, and I will go the other way. Aha! So Lot looked to the left and to the right. He saw that the land of Jordan was well taken care of, so Lot chose to go the way that looked better to him. He took his family and they settled in the beautiful land near the town of Sodom. Abram took his family and they moved the other way. Then one day, God said to Abram, Look up, all the land you see will be blessed. I will give it to you and your family forever. Abram received the promise and the blessing because he was faithful. Today's main points are Point one, selfishness always gives you less than you think. Uh, Abram trusted God so he obeyed without knowing what would happen. Abram based his decisions on spiritual spiritual values. Lot based his on physical values. Go, Go grab, grab your parents, parents and, and answer, answer these questions, questions with us. Why were Abram and Lot's herdsmen quarreling? Did Lot make the best choice? Why? Who chose first? What did you learn from this story? Hi everyone. Welcome to another Sunday at Kids Church Online. So this week we're talking about families and I don't know about your family, but in my family, while we loved each other very much and while we do love each other very much, sometimes, you know, things come up and we don't always see um, eye to eye. And sometimes, you know, we can have arguments over, th over different things. Now, that's normal in any family, in any friendship, in any kind of relationship. There are going to be times where, you know, you might disagree and you might argue. But here's the thing. In our story today, we learned how, you know, Abram and Lot, how they chose to settle their family differences. Well, the first thing that we see through that story is that they chose, Abraham and Lot chose to solve their problem in a loving manner. Now, Abram and Lot's servants, they were arguing over, you know, where each, each you know, person's um, sheep were going to eat and they were, you know, arguing over who would get the land, who could graze where. And you know what? It could have been a really big argument thing. But Abram and Lot, they were like, this is ridiculous. We need to find um, a better way to settle this. So Abram and Lot, they chose to settle it by Abram saying, look, you know, you go ahead. You choose, like, this is the land. You choose whatever part of the land you want and I'll take whatever's left. And so Lot, he chose the, the part of the land that he chose, the more fertile land, and Abram chose, and then Abram took the rest. And from that, and that solved the argument there. It could have been bigger, but they chose to solve it in a loving manner, instead of, you know, letting it argue and letting it get worse and worse and worse. Well, the second thing is that we see from the way that they solved their problem is that, you know, there was a desire to put others first. Abram, he loved his nephew Lot and he wanted the best for him. So he decided that he was going to let him choose first. Now, he probably knew that, you know what, there's a really good chance that Lot would choose the good land, the, fertile, the more fertile land. But you know what, he was okay with that. He was like, you know what, no, I'm going to let you choose first. And whatever you don't take, that's okay. I will take whatever's left. And God blessed him for that. He, you know, even though even though it was the less fertile land, God blessed him and he said, you know what? One day your descendants are gonna have all this land. The third thing we can kind of, you know, learn about how to solve our family problems is that we can respond to whatever arguments or differences we might have by resolving to solve, solve the problem unselfishly. 
So sometimes that means putting aside what our needs and what our wants are and thinking about, okay, what is the best for every everyone? Not just for me, but what is the best for everyone? In the situation with Lot and Abram, I mean, the servants were arguing, you know, things were getting heated. The best thing was to find that solution that they did. And that way everything could be calmed down and everybody could be, would be okay with it. In our lives, maybe you have a, you know, maybe you have an argument with your brother and sister. I know I certainly used to argue with my brother a lot. And it might be, you know, in that argument thinking to yourself, Okay, this is what I want. Is it really, like, is it really worth this argument? Do I really need to have that? Or can I, you know, this time let that person, you know, have what, have what they like? Or is there some kind of way that we can both kind of get what we, what we want? Can I meet them halfway? That's the way, that is the way to do it unselfishly, not just be like, no, I want my way and that's it. Even though it's tempting to do that sometimes. So I encourage you this week, you know, if you get into an argument with your brother and sister, or maybe, you know, you don't agree with your mom and dad on something, think about Abram and Lot and how they solved their problems. And think about, you know, putting others first and being unselfish in the way that you solve your problem. Not only thinking about what is best for you, but what also is best for the other person too. That's, um, that's God's love in action. So let's pray together, guys. Lord, I thank you for each and every person who is watching. I thank you, God, for your love and for your goodness. And that, Lord, you do help us to be able to find ways to solve our problems in a manner that's loving and unselfish and that shows your character, God. I pray for each and every child that you would help them to be able to learn how to do that and I pray that God you would just have your way in each person's lives this week I pray for your peace and your joy and for your protection on each and every person who's watching in Jesus name amen have a great week guys bye thanks for joining us see you next week